As the film begins, a well-known alchemist is shown. Alchemists are the only ones who can create or transform anything with their magic. Alchemist was out late at night when a man approached him and challenged him to a fight. There was a fight between them and that man kills the well-known alchemist. In the next scene, the main character of the story, Edward, is shown at a station. His brother, a robot, was also with him, and they were on their way there. They come upon a boy who informs, Edward, that he is a prince who has come to study how to be a mortal. Later, he informs, Edward, that he is also looking for a precious stone and wonders if he knows where he may locate one. Edward, does not respond after hearing, precious stone because he is also looking for it in order to bring his brother's body back. He has lost his body due to an incident, and, Edward, can resurrect him using that stone. While they were chatting to the prince, a couple of goons arrived and began fighting with everyone. The prince's allies were attempting to stop those goons from attacking, Edward, and his brother. Later, they got into a brawl while moving upside down the train. Then a friend appears to assist, Edward, a human-like creature. That suggests he wasn't a human, but rather a creature dressed as one. The prince's companion strikes him, but Edward says your attacks will not damage him because he has imprisoned many people's souls in his body and can never die. When the prince hears this, he says, okay, so he's immortal. Moving inside, they learn that one of the thugs has failed the train's brakes. After discovering this, Edward moves to the railway's engine but that goon causes Edward and his brother to fall from the train. With the use of his powers and magic, Edward raises the train track. As the train was about to crash in the city its speed gets slow because the train track was in the air. Due to it, it stops in the air. The colonel appears at the station and is also a alchemist, after which he captures all of the thugs. Afterward, Edward and his brother go to see the colonel. The colonel informs them that one of his ten alchemists has been killed. We only know that he has a mark on his forehead, which is why we call him a man with a mark. Because they are both alchemists, two guards will be assigned to them for their security, but Edward and his brother escape. They were about to leave when they met a girl in town who had fallen because of Edward, so he took her somewhere to feed her. The town girl claims that she came from another city solely to learn how to become immortal. Edward becomes enraged upon hearing this, as does the prince on the train. Enraged by the thought of the prince, Edward begins hunting that girl, but she hides behind a man wearing the coat to save her life. Edward stops while seeing this. Meanwhile, the colonel's soldier arrives, saying, the colonel has sent him for his protection. Then the man in the coat removes the cloth from his face and we discover from the mark on his forehead that he is the mark man. Seeing him, the soldier moves to attack him but the man with the mark ends him with a single attack. Meanwhile, Edward's brother arrives and they were running from there but the man with the mark stops them with his magic and says I come here from God's side to punish all of you. As the acts you are doing are against the rules of nature and then a fight begins between them. Edward's brother loses his hand in this fight and the man with the mark also breaks the metal hand of Edward. The colonel arrives with the soldiers when the mark man was about to end him. Now the colonel has the firepower so he tries to attack the mark man while using his power but he couldn't do it as he can't make the fireballs because of the rain. The mark man comes to attack him but the colonel's assistant arrives and saves him. Meanwhile, another alchemist enters and engages in a battle with the mark man. During this, the Mark Man's glasses fall off, and they learn by his red eyes and brown skin that he is from the enemy city. The residents of the hostile city were against the alchemists. As several soldiers arrive in this field, the man with the mark of power smashes the ground with his power and then vanishes. Then, Edward, moves on to his angry brother and says he could leave but why didn't he? Is he aware that they promised each other that they would return his body? What if something bad occurred to him? He wouldn't be able to do anything while still alive. The colonel informs them that there is animosity between their cities because the other city believes they should revere and conserve nature, which implies they should not modify anything. Many things would have altered in the city as a result of alchemist, 
but the enemy city did not approve. As a result, the hostility between these two cities grows more by the day, until one of the citizens shoots a child from the opposing city. It causes a conflict between these two cities, which lasts for many years despite the fact that the circumstances stay the same. Later, the administration decided they will end all the residents of the enemy city by alchemists. The same thing happened, and the residents of the opposing city were destroyed by their magic. Now, the Mark Man is also from that city, which is why he wishes to take revenge while eliminating all alchemists. On the other hand, the Mark Man is seen in an underground location, and a terrible creature similar to a human comes to eat him. He was about to eat him when the Mark Man he runs away. Edward moves to his friend Wynne. She created his robotic hand, and now she creates a new hand for him as he desires. Edward visits his mother's grave and sees his father for the first time, but he is enraged because he abandoned them when he was a boy. The blast injures the Mark Man, who is being treated by the town girl. Edward arrives, and Wynne's maid informs him that there will be a war in their city and that he should go to a region near the desert where he may get weapons to fight with. He arrives at the location specified by the maid, but a few people attack him. An old lady arrives and orders them not to fight. On another side, the Mark Man's master came to meet him and explains that he is terminating alchemists in order to extract retribution, but when will he do so? He must stop himself. The Mark Man clearly refuses to accept this. Then following that, Edward moves to the town with his brother where the Mark Man's treatment is taking place. They start fighting as soon as they spot the Mark Man, and Edward asks him why he has killed his friend, Wynne's parents. Meanwhile, Wynne arrives and hears all of this. She was going to shoot the Mark Man while raising the gun, but Edward stops her and the Mark Man remembers his brother who once saved him in this manner. When he misses his brother and goes, he says nothing to anyone. Meanwhile, the human-like creature also arrives while finding the Mark Man but the prince holds him while reaching there. Now the colonel's assistant arrives and shoots at that Mark Man's leg but the town girl saves him. The prince says to the colonel while showing him the human-like creature. Maybe the president is a human-like creature because he's seen the same mark in his eyes as the human-like creature's eye. The president moves to a man and says we can open the path with the colonel's help. Now the town girl is shown who treats the mark man's leg with the help of her magic. The colonel tells, Edward, an alchemist, has ended the companions of the mark man during the war while attacking them and the mark man died in that attack even though his hand was also separated. Then his brother revived him through his magic even though he has given him his hand. Edward's brother chases the town girl and discovers where the girl has kept the mark man. Later, Edward and his brother move there and fight with him while capturing him. Meanwhile, the colonel, his assistant, and Wynne arrives and Wynne discovers the Mark Man has ended her parents. She moves near him and the Mark Man feels now she will end him but Wynne bandages him on the wound of his arm instead of ending him. The Mark Man becomes surprised to see this and also realizes his mistake that he has done wrong to end her parents. Meanwhile, the prince arrives while running as there was a human-like creature behind him. He was about to end Win, but the Mark Man saves her. Meanwhile, the colonel's companion arrives and forbids the human-like creature to end Edward, or his brother otherwise, it will be bad. It was useless now because a fight begins between them here. The human-like creature opens his body, attracting everything in his surroundings. Edward, the colonel's friend and the prince, is drawn inside his belly. Then there's the scene in his tummy where, Edward, asks where they are. The colonel's companion states that they are in a magical cave and that there is an exit when pushing further. Edward, responds no, it's not a magical cave since a magical cave isn't like this. That area is unique. According to the colonel's companion, there is no way out of here and they will be stuck here forever. The colonel's companion emerges from his terrible getup. And this was the film's concluding scene.